The San Diego Zoo Safari Park is celebrating 50 years today, so we decided to take you on a little trip. Now we're going down under, I believe. <laughs> hey, Casey. Good morning, What's Casey. Up? Hi. Hi, good morning. Well, we have entered Australia where we have the kangaroos and the wallabies and this guy who's not leaving our side. He's our little helper this morning. Um, yeah, he's just hanging out, enjoying, enjoying us. So Christy Burtis is here to tell us more about the 50th anniversary. Let's start there because we have the kangaroos around. So I've got your back. No one's coming up to fight you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried. Well, welcome to beautiful Australia. Uh, this area opened in 2018 and it's over three and a half acres. So this is one representation of the alliances that we have throughout the world. So the continent of Australia, you'll see beautiful animals represented here from Australia. Not only do we see magpie geese, there's other birds from Australia. And right now you're looking at our gray kangaroos and their joeys. We have 12 kangaroos right now and four joeys. So they are a marsupial, so that means their young will stay in their pouch. Um, in addition, we have a special opportunity and a surprise for you. Okay. So why don't we take a walkabout? Let's 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 walk the walkabout. Walk. I mean, I w I was walking through earlier and I had a kangaroo or a wallaby <laughs> coming full speed at me. I was terrified for my life. <laughs> but people are able to come in here and really explore. That's right. It is open throughout the entire day, so you can walk just like we're doing right now and experience this beautiful habitat. Also, I want to call attention, we have about 1.2 million plants here at the Safari Park. So we're not only working to conserve animals, but we're working to conserve plants and natural habitats. So if you've never been to Australia, come here, take a walk about, be able to see and immerse yourself in with these beautiful, beautiful animals. And all of the trees and plant life that you're seeing are from Australia. How do you tell the difference between a kangaroo and a wallaby? That's a great question. The first way is their size. So kangaroos tend to be a little bit larger at about 120 pounds, while the wallaby is typically about 25 pounds. However, you notice we have some joeys. So they have differences in color. And then I also look at their ears. So you just okay. saw kangaroos, but we're going to turn the corner here. We have one of our special wallabies. Her name is B. And let's see if we can get a little bit closer. I'm going to give okay. you this. This is a, a hibiscus. It's one of her favorite treats. So why don't we get a little bit closer? She's here with her behaviorist, Donna. And uh, why don't you get up close and see what it's like to be a behaviorist? Okay, how close is close? Cause I'm a little nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. Just go ahead. And Am I supposed down. to feed this to her? Yeah, just kneel down right there and let's see. Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you think? I'm, I'm honestly speechless right now because I thought I was going to get punched by one of these when I first walked in here. They're running full speed. I saw a fist fight, but this is so cute. Yeah, these animals are around people every single day. You'll see pathways. Our guests are encouraged to stay on the pathways, but you're actually with one of our behaviors right now. So she's watching the behavior. So you are perfectly fine. You can see B is very comfortable with you. So this is one way our guests can come in and experience Australia and, and learn about all of the conservation work that we do for species in this country. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. How much is, do their tails weigh? Does that help them in any way? It does. It helps them with balance. And in total, she's about 25 pounds. So what do you guys think? How, how heavy is her tail? That's a really great question. I think her tail weighs a good three quarters of a pound yeah. uh, three quarters of a pound yes <laughs> she's just living life right now okay wait quickly what is what do we have over here yes. is that a, that's not a porcupine it is, is it not a porcupine this is an echidna so earlier we had an opportunity and hopefully your viewers will be able to see this is the only place outside of Australia that you can see platypus so we have two platypus that you can come and see um, and they are called a monotreme. So we also have an echidna here. And Laura's here. She's one of our experts. So she can share more about the echidna. Sure, yeah. So this, just like she said, this is the cousin to the platypus, except echidnas are typically found on the land. They have these really long nose. They are insectivores. 
So they are really great at finding insects with that very long nose and there's a small little opening for their mouth and out comes a very sticky long tongue that they can collect things like ants and termites. Christy was telling me that the platypus, they don't see very well. Is she, this one the same? Correct. Yeah, they are very nocturnal animals. So Shaw is up for this early morning experience and then gets the rest of the day off. But they do come out when it's really dark at night and that's when everybody's sleeping, but that's when the bugs are out. Wow. Very cool. I'm learning so much today, Paul and Lauren. We're going to go ahead and send things back over to you. But Paul... Did I lessen your fears of kangaroos? Yeah, these are young I ones. I just fed one. These are young ones. When they're young, <laughs> any even baby sharks are okay, but it's when they get bigger, Casey. That's when they do their damage. Hey, Casey, can Casey, I ask you okay. one, quick, one quick question? How do they find trainers and people that are, that are experts in the handling and the care of these animals? That, that's got to be tough when you have so many different species. Where do they find their, uh, their people? Yeah, where do you find your people to help with the kangaroos or the giraffes or the rhinos? Well, they're all specialists. We've actually people come from all over the world to work here at uh. the famous San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Uh, so many go to school, they have a specialty, they work at other institutions and they come here. Sometimes they get a, an opening position and sometimes we have experts that come in and join our team. So. We're very, very lucky. We have about 200 wildlife care specialists that care for our animals each and every day. Wow. Wow. Well, bravo. And it's 50 years. We're celebrating that today. So if you haven't been here, you have to come out. It's an experience. I Casey, agree. I just want you to realize how lucky you were to be able to see the kangaroo carrying the little baby Joey. I've been there so many times, I've never seen that. That was really cool. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I, I looked for over, me, I'm I sat like, next to you for three Oh, my months, gosh. <laughs> You were carrying your Joey. Really? Yeah. Same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, same. Sometimes I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 